Today, we are joined by Blair Sellers and Sarah McWilliams. Sarah, I apologize. I didn't have uh, the slide up with your photo on it. Uh, both of these ladies are from Toby Dynavox, and they're going to be talking to us about TD Snap and the motor plan, I believe. And I'm going to yeah, go. We're gonna share. I'll we're stop gonna share sharing both. and yeah. I'll. Yeah, I'll let you ladies tell us all about it. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm Blair Sellers. I'm in the Portland area, um, and then Sarah is here as well. She supports all of Oregon that I I don't cover, so um, kind of Salem South and then East. Um, and we have a presentation that we're going to share our slides and then we'll hop out of the presentation a few times and pull up TD Snap and show core first and motor plan today. Um, Sarah, would you like me to share the presentation? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Let's see. Okay. should be sharing. So this is just our kind of intro slide here. Um, it does have QR codes to our learning hub and live trainings. Um, so <laughs> because I wanted um, to start here in case anyone wants to see those links via the QR code, um, those are several of our online resources that will cover further information. Um, kind of today's an introduction, but if you want to learn more, you want to watch videos at your own pace or join a live Zoom like this with someone from our learning team, those links will take you directly to that. Um, and now, let's see, I'm going to show our introduction slides. So just a little bit about each of us. Um, again, I'm Blair. I am an SLP by background. Um, I've been with Toby Dynavox for a little over two years now. Uh, and I do live in Portland and support the Portland general area. Um, and I've met a few of you at AT Ties last year and um, on these Echo Voices calls. So it's great to be back. Um, my SLP experience was mostly with adults clinically, um, but now I support both adult and pediatric AAC users. Um, and my contact info is there. Yeah, and um, my name's Sarah. I'm the uh, consultant for all of Oregon that Blair doesn't cover in Northern California. Um, I'm a speech pathologist by background and worked mostly with adults and children um, in several different settings. Um, I also love research and still participate with some of the research uh, in the AAC lab at South Alabama. Um, and I'm very new to Toby Dynavox. I just started at the end of October and I'm super excited to be here and excited to meet you guys um, at AT Ties and continue to, to get to know the community, so. All right, so a little bit about Toby Dynavox before we dive in. Um, I know most folks are somewhat familiar, but just in case, um, Toby Dynavox is um, a provider of AAC devices as well as software. So today we'll be taking a look at two different layouts or page sets within TD Snap, which is our primary communication software. Um, but we also make the hardware that the software comes on. Um, and we did provide Chandra with the um, matrix just before this call. So that will be accessible to you all later, I believe. Um, and that goes through the compatibility of each of the devices as well as the software with um, feature matching. So um, most of the software functions exactly the same on all of our devices, but just so you know, that'll be a resource to refer to later. And we are here today as kind of like the face of Toby Dynavox locally, you know, in the Oregon community. But behind us, I always like to point out that there's just this great big network of support. Um, so we are the solutions consultants, this little icon on the left. But behind us, there's always tech support and then those online additional resources too. So should you ever have a question, um, we can direct you to kind of self-paced training or 
our learning team who puts together great ASHA CEUs um, to continue your learning journey about anything from access methods to modeling to implementation in a classroom to um, you know customizing software for unique needs. Um, so we are a big network of support. And I kind of already um, plugged the Learning Hub as well, but I just wanted to point out that um, with Toby Dynavox, we support folks from before they get a device to through the funding process and after they get a device. So um, the Learning Hub is our kind of self-paced, you know, you want to watch a video on your own time and learn more about TD Snap. Um, the Learning Hub is a great resource for that. And then within that, we also have the live events calendar, much like this, where you can hop on a Zoom at a scheduled time um, and put questions in the chat. So that's a great uh, way to learn for folks that want to be more dynamic and, and have their questions answered in real time. So these are always available. Um, and then after folks get a device, those resources are still available. Um, but we also are then more involved on a one on one basis with like device setup and parent and teacher training and all of that, um, as well as tech support. So just a little bit about what we do and what support is available to you all um, behind the scenes of Toby Dynavox. Okay, so Sarah is going to do a little introduction of TD Snap now. Yeah, so TD Snap is our software that kind of encompasses um, multiple different page sets. Um, today, we're really going to focus on core first and uh, motor plan, um, but there are also other page sets available within the software as well um, to give solutions to each individual user and what works well for them. So as I was saying, it's a family of softwares um, and it kind of comes with a literate page set, a core first, motor plan, and then some of the other page sets that are available for extra purchase are um, gateway and pod, um, and then the aphasia page set as well is also available um, with a free uh, account for professionals. So uh, there are lots of different options. Um, and today Blair is gonna start us off with core first. Great. And yeah, I like to point out that TD Snap is, you know, it's our most recognizable software by name. And it really is this umbrella of lots of different um, layouts or page sets. So um, we'll just talk briefly about a few here, but we're really going to dive into those two primary um, page sets. So um, I guess, Sarah, did you want to take this and talk a little bit more about the specifics of TD Snap before we dive in more specifically? Sure, yeah. Um, so TD Snap at a glance, it has symbol supported software um, and it also we now offer a literate page set um, within there as well. Um, it's usable on both Windows and iPads um, and free for professional use. So if you are a therapist or a teacher that would like um, to get TD Snap, um, if you have a Toby Dynavox account, uh, you can uh, put in your professional affiliation. And once it's approved, um, it's available for free download. Um, and like I was mentioning, it comes with the core first page set, motor plan, text, and aphasia that are all um, free for you to use with your patients or students. Um, it's built for communication and has multiple different options as well as different options to help with supports like um, Schedules, first then schedules, um, things like uh, what you're going to be doing throughout the day, a timer, as well as an integrated Google Assistant. So you're able to put in your Gmail and then um, use Google Assistant right through the software. Um, it also has word prediction, access to the board maker player and other good therapy tools like a whiteboard as well. Yeah, and we'll go through those specifically so you can see them all. Um, but this slide, you know, for our purposes of sharing the slides after the fact, um, I like the slide because it just mentions some of those tools all in one spot. So we already kind of talked about all these different um, layouts, but there they are again um, by name. So again, the top two core first motor plan we're going to look at today, pod, um, 
is a little bit different. It's, um, you know, a high tech adaptation of the light tech pod flip books um, for partner assisted scanning. So th that does live in our software as a high tech version, um, but it is a in-app purchase. Um, Gateway similarly is a semantically organized page set. Um, it is an in-app purchase as well, just because Toby Dynavox did not create those, but they're adaptations within our software. Um, the aphasia page set for adults, should you ever um, work with or support adults with aphasia, um, it is a great tool as well. Um, very similar in layout as core first, um, but just with adult friendly symbols and um, some more aphasia specific communication tools. Okay, so core first, I'll just talk about it here a little bit, then we're gonna pop out and I'm gonna give you a little tour of it. Um, and then we'll pause for questions. Um, core first is really centered on core vocabulary. So the building blocks of most of our sentences in English. Um, that homepage in core first that I'll show um, is the hub of core words. So these words can take on the context of anything that we're wanting to communicate about. Um, they're really general, but um, widely applicable. Then we also have phrase-based tools um, in quick fires and topics for quick replies, attention getters, um, you know, quick engagement with communication partners. And then we also have semantic vocabulary um, in the, the fringe vocab in word lists um, to help folks be more specific. So it's that combination of core words and fringe vocab that um, help us build sentences. So I'll go through kind of how that's laid out um, intentionally in the software to help communicators. So um, maybe I'll hop out here, Sarah, and pull up TD Snap Core first. So I'm going to shop stop uh, sharing for a moment and then reshare the software. And I should share with sound so that you all can see and hear what I'm doing. Let me know if you're not seeing TD Snap Core first. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. So this is our core first page set of TD Snap. Um, I have it on a pretty expanded grid size here just so that I can easily show you all some of the tools. Um, but first, right off the bat, I want to show you that we can change grid sizes um, very easily. And all of these grid sizes here are pre-built into the software, as well as the ability to grow the grid size um, by a custom row column combination. So um, TD Snap Core First is built on um, flexibility, literacy and growth. So um, thinking growth, you know, we might uh, need different page set uh, grid size options. So I like to highlight that right off the bat, but I am showing you a six by six, just so you can see some of these tools. So here on the homepage, we do have core words. Um, this looks pretty similar to some other um, AAC software layouts because several of them use the Fitzgerald key of um, color coding uh, parts of speech. So we do have question words in blue here, um, pronouns in yellow, verbs in green, and then these connection words and articles in orange. And this is laid out to build sentences in um, subject, verb, object or declarative sentence structure moving left to right. So, you know, I have a dog, for example, would move left to right. I have a. And then to find dog, I can go into word lists, which is where we start getting the fringe vocab. So the more context specific vocab, um, I have a could apply to a lot of different things. Those are all core words, but dog, we're gonna get more specific. I'm gonna go into word lists, animals, dog. Dog. You'll see in these word lists, I'm gonna back up just a touch. Um, there are categories here. Um, these can be 
alphabetically sorted. They can be, um, right now they're just, actually they are alphabetically sorted, um, but that's not how they come initially. I've done that um, because sometimes that helps folks find the category a little bit more easily. Um, so that's a, a new feature that you can turn on or off. But within these um, fringe vocab pages, these categories of words, we also have subcategories. So you can arrange things really specifically to help um, the communicator find their words um, more easily by these subcategories. So word lists, again, is a great spot to get more specific with fringe vocab. We also have this personal page right on the homepage. And this is something I love to highlight because I think of this personal page as like an all about me section, you know, um, in second grade, we make those posters all about me. And it has like family names and my favorite things, my favorite shows, my favorite snacks, things we want to talk about all the time that are really important to us. And we don't necessarily want communicators to have to go through all these word lists to find their favorite items, right? We want to make them really efficient to find so they are in this personal page. I was showing this to someone, they loved Monsters, Inc. That's why Monsters, Inc. is right here in personal. But you'll see also there are, um, you know, these highly personal and important um, pages like families, friends, favorite items that live right here. Just one selection away from our core words so you can get to them quickly. Now I'm going to show you quick fires, which is a little bit farther down on this navigational toolbar. Quick fires are um, attention getters, comments, um, greetings, really uh, great for engagement. And this is where we start to get um, some of our Gestalt language processing tools um, for, our, for our GLP communicators here. So quick fires are sometimes words, sometimes phrases, but really great for um, just building engagement with communication partners. So we do have things like yes and no, um, help, hey, come here, um, sorry, you're welcome. So thinking like these high frequency messages that you probably say throughout your day. But we also have subcategories across the top. So greetings, this is one of my favorites. Wow, cool. <laughs> um, so responses to things, being able to say... I like that. Don't like. I don't like that, right? Um, so some some good um, just responses and, and messages that folks can use throughout their day. Um, they're not context specific. They are more broadly applicable. There's also communication repairs here, and this is one of my favorite functions of um, TD Snap, starting to build that advocacy around communication and device use. What I want to say is not on my device. Can you help me find what I want to say? So these are all built into quick fires. There's also a spot for my phrases. So thinking about Gestalt language processors, there might be some phrases that are really um, personal and, and used a lot that are meaningful to that communicator. Um, one of our colleagues does a great training on the Learning Hub called um, TV Snap Tools for um, Gestalt Language Processors. And she talks about her kids, um, both of whom are autistic and GLPs. And she talks about how her daughter um, has a phrase that's, it's like, um, let's go boys. And it, she uses it in a lot of contexts, not always with boys, but it means come this way, follow me, play with me. And that would be a great um, spot to put that phrase in my phrases, because it's something that her daughter says quite a lot. So um, these tools, I think, are just really um, efficient and functional. You can, of course, customize anything here. So remove the, the ones that are not applicable to the communicator um, and build custom ones if you'd like. So that was quick fires here. I'm gonna pause there real quick and see if anybody has any questions before I move on to topics. There are no questions in the chat right now. Okay, great. So topics is another spot where we can focus on 
um, pre-stored phrases, really efficient communication at the phrase level where we can put um, questions, comments, exclamations, all on a single button. So one button selection gets us a full message. I have changed the layout here a little bit. I've um, color coded some that I want to show for a specific reason. Um, but first I wanna just introduce the, the flow of the topics and some of the tools here. So let's take a look at games. All of our topics in TD Snap Core First have the same structure. So um, we've got questions in blue. Do you want to play a game? How do you play? Then we've got kind of neutral comments and exclamations in orange. Let's play a game. Look at the rules. Let's play again. Then we've got positive commentary in green. I win. And negative commentary in red. This is boring. And of course, lots of space to customize. Um, purple could be like your phrases, kind of similar back to that, my phrases, spot and quick fires, um, but it's ready to be customized. Depending on the grid size, you might not have this purple row. Blair, um, real quick, can you project TD Snap on a smart board? It depends what interface the smart board is. Um, if it's true, like smart board brand, those are actually on an Android system. Um, so you can't have TD Snap inherently on the smart board, but if you're using a Windows computer, then you can. So it just kind of depends on the smart board's system. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes, a question in the chat. You you raised your head. Go go ahead. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Hi, Blair. <laughs> Hi. Um, I my question about topics. Um, and I, I use TD Snap with quite a few students, but my main question is how do you recommend or what's the suggestions of of using um, the topics pages in addition to the generative language core page like how do you well first of all do you recommend doing just topics with certain with students and just that being their board um and if not how do you do how do you kind of teach both um yeah i guess that's kind of my question yeah that's a great question and I'll use games as an example here. Um, so, you know, in the games topic, we might have those phrases like, do you want to play? Let's look at the rules. But then we also have an easy toggle back to core words. So I can say, um, you know, like, like, I can say more. more, I can say go and stop. So core words that might apply to the game. Um, you go, I go, um, you know, she goes. But then I can use this back button to hop right back into that same topic. So um, just using core words and back gives me a quick toggle between the home screen of core words and these really specific messages. I don't necessarily recommend only setting someone up with topic phrases because then they lose the ability to generate anything that's not pre-programmed them right we, we still want to have access to core words for that robust flexible communication um, but i think these are great tools and with that core words button right here and then back you can kind of hop back and forth um, does that give you some ideas yes that is very helpful um and then my other question question was how did you make those buttons within the same grid, like really big or long. I would love yeah. to do that. <laughs> I'll show you that. Yep, I did that so they would stand out. So I remembered which ones to share. And I think making them visually stand out is a great um, tool for our communicators as well. So I'll show you that when I hop back onto that page. Um, before I go on, I want to show you these supports, which are on every single topic. Um, and these are great visual supports for our AAC users. 
Um, they are specific to each topic, but they are customizable. So should you build a topic that is not in the system like horseback riding or I built March Madness, for example, you could customize these too. Um, supports always have a visual timer here. It is defaulted for five minutes, but you can change that if you need a different duration. Um, the visual timer is really helpful for those folks who need a visual kind of cue to help with transitions and setting expectations of activity and, and what's coming next. So you'll see it's ticking down across the top here, this red band. When it ends, it kind of sounds like an iPhone alarm. Then again, this is the games topic. So we've got a first then. Um, this is about Uno, but you could customize it. First, get my cards. Then, play Uno. There is a four-step visual schedule. So this is the one for playing a game. Choose a color, decide who goes first, play the game, clean up. There is a script for games. So thinking about our GLPs again, this could be a really good, really good communication tool. Will you play with me? And you could use this as a therapy, you know, session tool, practicing the script, practicing like, you know, what comes next, things like that. It's very functional. Let's do this one. This looks fun. Thanks for playing. So they are in order of kind of that conversation, like getting started with, with the activity and then wrapping up with the activity. And you'll see that throughout the topics. And then something I really like is this social story in every um, in every topic. So kind of, these are more around like setting expectations of, of um, what's going to happen and how we should, uh, you know, move through the activity. So we'll just listen to a few here. I love to play games with my friends. My friend will suggest a game, and if I like it, I will tell him I like that game. If it's a game I do not like, I will tell my friend I don't like that game. Let's pick another. I will follow the rules to the game and try my best. No matter who wins, I will be happy I play a game with my friend. So kind of setting expectations, um, going through that social story might be helpful for folks before they embark on that activity, right? Um, to kind of get uh, get ready. So these are in every single topic. Um, I did make some of these larger and, and color coded just to highlight them. Um, one thing I wanted to mention here is that topics are another place in the system where we're really focused on growth. So you see topics for more, um, you know, emergent communicators, like young, young age um, related activities like Mr. Potato Head, or there's bubbles, but you also see things like dating and job coach. And um, if we go into this one appointment, this is for someone checking into an appointment or needing to reschedule an appointment. So it is really meant to help um, it's meant to grow with our communicators um, and, and have topics that they might need through uh, development. Um, I did make these bigger and color-coded, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, anytime in TD Snap, if you want to change something, you just go up to this gear and pencil. And I'll show you my March Madness topic in a moment. Um, but I made it larger just by selecting it, so tapping it, or if you're on a computer, clicking on it with a mouse, and then you can drag the corners. You can do that on any page in TV Snap. So TV and movies, if I wanna make that back to the original grid size, just drag that corner. If I wanted to make it now taller, I can drag the corner down. Um, so just as an example of a custom topic, you'll see our topic pages have custom, um, you know, your topic up here. Research around this page set has shown that folks are really using these custom topics more than any other, which makes sense, right? We all have activities and hobbies that um, are meaningful to us that might not be pre-built into the system. So I built a March Madness topic because that's an exciting thing going on these days. Um, and I used, I wanted to show you just a functional application of how we can follow this kind of layout. So I do have questions up here. Which round is it? Who is your favorite team? Uh, kind of exclamations and, and requests here. 
Captions on. Turn it up. And then positive commentary. Caitlin Clark is my favorite player. Iowa is my favorite team. Women's basketball has come so far. And then I have some negative commentary in red. These refs are bad. My team is losing. I didn't build out the supports, but you'll see how they are blank on a custom topic and ready to customize. And then just real quick, I wanted to show you some of these um, more like adult oriented or young adult oriented um, topics. So this is for a job coach. Can we practice interviewing? What's the next step? I like my job. It didn't go well. It's too hard. So there are a lot of um, nice tools within TD Snap that are really meant to grow um, with the communication needs of individuals. And lastly, here in topics, I just wanted to show some things that folks have built in topics. So these are not things that I built, but things that I pulled down from Page Set Central, which is our sharing site. Um, these look very different, but just to give you an idea of how flexible TD Snap can be. Minecraft. This is a Minecraft page. So someone did get creative with button size. Just recently, about a month ago, I would say, um, we added the ability to do a web search on the button. So you'll see, you know, some of these are um, like web images of Minecraft characters. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, but the actual logo of Minecraft, for example, or you saw on my basketball page, I had the actual photo of Iowa, right? Um, so when we're in button editing, you can now do a symbol search. That's what Minecraft comes up with. Not really Minecraft, but if you go into the web search, you could even, you know, you could do something like that. So that is um, available in the newest update. Then, um, my feelings. This feelings page, I liked. I thought it was maybe a little busy for some, but it, just another example of how um, someone built this page for their needs. So uh, an example of how flexible TV Snap can be. And lastly, I really liked this Daniel Tiger feelings page for someone who's- Daniel Tiger feelings. With Daniel Tiger, and they put songs on each of these buttons. So we'll do a little listen. Can you hear it? Barely. Oh, that's better. Maybe. So I liked these examples just of how differently you can set things up depending on your needs. Okay, I'm going to hustle here because I know I'm going a little long on topics. Um, we've got a keyboard word prediction, great for literacy building and thinking again like growth and communication needs as we develop. This can be ABC, it can be QWERTY. Right now it's laid out like this because it's matching my page set grid size, but we can turn that off and make it look like a full QWERTY keyboard. And a few more tools I wanted to share in the dashboard here. There is a whiteboard. So turning the high tech device into, or, or rather kind of building a light tech option within the high tech system. So if someone needs a whiteboard to draw what they're thinking of, um, you know, basketball could be like this. Um, it's a nice option. Um, we also just launched these books and photos fairly recently. So this is a nice way for folks to be able to share about themselves. Um, regardless of what access method they're using, if they activate this part of the screen, it will read the caption and this part of the screen will turn the page. My friends. This is me. My name is Allie. Here are some of my friends. So talking about family, hobbies, maybe sharing about something new and exciting in one's life could be done here. Um, and the nice thing is when you know how to edit TD Snap, these edit the exact same way. So changing the message is exactly like editing a button. Changing the picture is as simple as changing a symbol. So um, it all follows the same editing rules. Then there are some tools that are in the aphasia page set that I really like to use for emergent communicators as well. I think it's rating great, scales. I think it's great to have rating scales available. So these are different sizes of rating scales. 
you know, being able to talk about pain or your feelings about something. Um, so I pulled those in from the aphasia page set. They also are on page set central and can be imported. And then there's two calendars that I really like. The daily activities. Calendar. Daily activities. So this would be for someone whose day looks fairly similar day to day. And of course, you could change how many um, time slots there are. Or this weekly calendar. Calendar. Weekly schedule. So you can see Wednesday morning, we have echo voices. Echo voices. Or Monday afternoon, we might have speech. So this is a great tool for um, folks who are maybe at the stage to start learning about time management or what's coming next um, in their week and to have a little bit more um, tools just built right into their system. And those are all in the dashboard. And I pulled these three in from the aphasia page set. And I won't go too far into them, but there are Google Assistant and other smart assistant pages built into the system like Alexa and Siri. Great for our communicators using TD Snap who have complex access needs and um, you know would benefit from environmental controls or hey you know Alexa um, play the Beatles or play Taylor Swift right um, for entertainment and just engagement with their surroundings. It's wonderful that these tools are built right into the system. With that, I'm going to stop sharing unless there's questions. Yeah, maybe I'll take questions before I stop sharing in case there's anything I need to revisit. Blair, do you want to show the uh, sound effects? Do you have those on oh, there? Yeah. yeah. So there is, um, I need it pink so it'd stand out and then I didn't show it. These acapella sound effects are, um, they go with our acapella voices and each voice has a list of compatible sound effects. Um, you can find the full list on acapella's website. Um, but I'll just show a few of my favorites. I'm using the voice Ella, um, and she's got a whole lot of these. The voice Josh um, is also compatible with a lot of these. Dad! 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 So getting a little bit more like personality and inflection with some of these. Also for non-speaking folks, the ability to do sound effects, um, I think is really great. Um, there's also, I like these throat clearing ones, like getting attention. <coughs> and the way we encode these on the button is there's a sequence. Um, and again, the full list is on acapella's website, but it's like hashtag, you know, laugh or hashtag dad hashtag and there's a certain code so it might be like dad02 and you can put that on a button with another message so you could have dad in that voice um inflection and then say like i'm so angry with you you know you can have a longer message on the same button it doesn't have to be in isolation but this is just the demo page to kind of test them all out for this voice and then from there you can decide which ones you want to implement throughout the system and build them onto a button that is super fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some great engagement uh, tools there. So does anyone have oh. any questions right now? Uh, yeah. We uh, have oh. Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, the... Um, not seeing some of on the, my dashboard, I'm not seeing those. Um, are these updates like pushed out already? So, um, I would say check what version of TD Snap you're using. You can do that with this light bulb. Um, the newest version is 1.31, and that's where we got those web search abilities as well. So, if you're on an older version, you might need to update um, and then import the the new things like the photo albums, the demo sound effects. And I can help you with that. I'll send you the, the steps. I mean, I think it's saying 1.31 on mine, but but we could talk about that. That's OK. I you might um, just have to import it um, into the page set. Oh, OK. OK, maybe. Thank you, Blair. Maybe we can meet. <laughs> That'd yep. be awesome.
Yeah, um, I had a question again about the topic. Sorry. So in the um, ones that you showed that were brought in, um, like my family here is in topics, but there's also like a per in personal or, you know, in mm -hmm. the four pages, there's also a place for family. And I was just wondering how you decide how does one go about deciding which place to kind of put it in? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and that's something that Sarah will also kind of speak to in motor plan of like the differences between the page sets, because in core first things can live in several places. So my family in personal is probably mostly going to be names, right? So I can say my family members names, um, in all word lists, we also have people and we might have family listed under people, but you'll see in word lists, these are mostly single words and mostly nouns. So the, you know, these are people words of specific people and um, pronouns. And in family, they're mostly single word and kind of relationship labels. Um, in topics, by contrast, my family has, again, more phrases, more um, like questions, exclamations. We fight a lot. I don't like animals. We get along. I live with my family. So more, um, more robust, more extended messages, I would say. Um, versus just mom, dad, sister, brother, we have, I have two sisters. Do you have any pets? I love my dog, things like that in topics. So word lists might be used to like label or name um, something, or you might build a, a sentence combining core words and, and the um, people list of like, I have two sisters, right? But you can also have one button here that says I have two sisters, depending on access and communication style of that person. All right, I'll turn it over to Sarah to look at motor plan. All right, I'm gonna share my screen here. Can you guys see that okay? Looks Great. Good. Wow. Perfect. So motor plan kind of came out of this idea of we were hearing a lot in the community that therapists really like core first, but it didn't fit everybody. And they really wanted a motor plan option um, for kids that might not be, um, you know, necessarily gestalt language processors and slowly building language, um, like a lot more, um, you know, maybe neurotypical kids were doing, but didn't have a voice to, to do it. Uh, so that's kind of how Motor Plan came about. And it, instead of core first, where things live in multiple pages, like Blair was talking about, um, in Motor Plan, everything's going to be in the system one time. Um, the only words that are in here twice are orange for the color and the fruit and May for May I and the month. Um, there are about 2,700 words um, in the software um, and they're all fairly easy to kind of navigate to. Um, so looking at this, this homepage here, um, if I wanted to say something like, I, I want, want pizza. Pizza. It's going to, I'm going to go through the motor plan and then it's going to take me back to that home screen um, like it would um, so I can continue with efficient uh, communication. Um, so the idea is kind of thinking about, you know, if, if we're typing on a keyboard, um, we're not really thinking about where our, our fingers are going. We're thinking about the message that we're writing and motor plan is designed to be similar in the sense that once uh, the user learns the motor plan, they're not really thinking, oh, I need to go locate where my favorite food is. I can just quickly type that message because I already 
know what to do um, and I know how to get there. Um, so this is Motor Plan 30. Um, it comes in two different sizes. So we have Motor Plan 30, and then I'll quickly show you um, Motor Plan 66 so you can just see the different in grid size. Um, in Core First, it's going to be, you can change the grid size to two by two, four by six, whatever your heart desires. Whereas in Motor Plan, you're going to have these two options here. Um, with Motor Plan 66, it's going to be um, many more words on a page, which means less hits to get to a button. Um, but it truly just depends on the user and what is going to be best um, to fit them. Another thing to note about Motor Plan is that instead of we're in core first, things are located based on kind of theme and um, what we associate an item with. Uh, things in core first are going to be um, uh, put in a place based on their function. So an example might be backpack um, in core first. That might be under travel and school and things not to forget when I'm leaving the house. Whereas in motor plan, it's going to be based on what its actual function is. So um, it's only going to be located in one spot. And if we look here in containers, um, we'll have a backpack. Backpack. And this is because um, a backpack is something that holds things. It's technically a container. And that's based on some research that shows that um, a lot of users pick up language, or we pick up language in general click quicker when we associate um, something with what it does versus where it, you know, where it goes with me or um, a certain theme. So focusing more on that function aspect um, as well. We still also have access to our quick fires over here on the corner for quick access, just like in core first, as well as a place still to customize personal needs. I can always um, change these and add in more as well. Um, additionally, we have um, other questions here that we can ask about as well. Let's see, and communication repairs, as Blair mentioned earlier, is a great thing to have access to. Um, and lastly, within our quick fires, we have our phrases. Um, Hi, my name is Sarah. Under uh, quick fires, we have our keyboard, so still focusing always on literacy. Um, I currently have this set up on a um, ABCD keyboard, but this can be changed to a QWERTY keyboard, as well as one keyboard on a full page as well. Under here, under keyboards, we have our word form. So all of our word form forms are going to be located in one spot. Um, so for instance, if I were to say something like... Mom. Like. Likes. So it's going to add that word form on the end. Um, maybe mom likes pizza, pizza. too. Everybody likes pizza. Um, so... Our word forms are always going to be located here, and it's only going to show me the ones that I can add to the word that makes sense. Um, the others are going to be grayed out. We also still have our dashboard as well, um, where we can use the whiteboard. Um, we still have these built-in timers and supports as well. Um, we can make all kinds of different schedules in here, um, as well as still having access to smart assistants like Alexa and Siri um, within the dashboard as well. So another cool feature within um, Motor Plan is this really amazing thing called the um, filter, the vocabulary filter. Let me move. The bar across the top is currently blocking it for me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So right here, um, we have our vocabulary filter. And if I turn this on, I can select um, 
different words I might want to work on specifically. So let's say I'm working on um, things that I like or food and drinks that we like. Um, I can select these items. So I'm gonna unselect them really quickly just to show you. Um, so I'm working on commenting on things that I like and I'll just select a few items here and then I click done. It's only gonna show me the motor plan or those words that I'm working on. So I like pizza. So I can work on the motor plan during that activity. And then when I'm finished, I can toggle off the vocabulary filter. Um, there are multiple lists you can make. So if I come over here to this pencil and bullet icon, um, I can manage my list. So you'll see here that there's already some that have been prepared within the software. Um, so if I select that one, it's gonna only show me the words that um, are for that activity. So there, I've had therapists tell me they've made um, activities for things like brown bear, brown bear and hungry caterpillar. Um, and you can go in and select those different lists that you wanna use with different kids um, for different things that you're working on. And then when we're done, we just toggle it off and then we still have access to all of that um, vocabulary. Okay. And then lastly, um, I wanted to show you all the um, Spanish and English or the bilingual version that was recently um, released. So this is the Motor Plan 30. Um, it's also available in 66 for bilingual Spanish English as well. Um, but it truly was designed for bilingual speakers and to kind of work in that same aspect of the way someone that might switch between um, two languages um, would do it. So if we look here, if I say, um, yo, it's gonna go ahead and um, conjugate the verb for me. Um, so if I said once, yeah. And then maybe I can't remember um, the word that I was looking for. Um, and so I go to English and I'm trying to find pizza. Um, pizza. I here. So you can easily toggle between um, the two uh, different languages within the software. Um, and it, a lot of different um, consultants that speak Spanish have really talked about how much um, it works like a Spanish speaker would use it or a bilingual um, speaker would want something uh, to be. So uh, it's a pretty cool uh, new feature that we have as well. Are there any questions? I currently can't see anybody, so. <laughs> Um, there's no questions. I was asking about um, other languages that were available, which Blair has uh, addressed. Um, an English-French bilingual in Core First. Does TB, yeah. uh, does Toby have any, um, are they working on other languages? Like, is there anything coming up that we should know about? Um, not that I know of at the moment. I do know that um, many consultants, myself included, are always putting things into product feedback um, for more languages and more um, pre-made page sets. So hopefully there are more things coming out, but um, there are a lot in uh, TD Core First or TD Snap Core First, like there's a, a simple Chinese page set, um, and, and things like that. Yeah, I added also in my response there in the chat, um, if there's a language that doesn't currently exist in a bilingual, you know, with a toggle, like Sarah showed where it changes the whole page set, um, we can build a button in the system to launch page set of that language. So let's say Chinese, um, we could have a button that says switch page set and it opens the whole, in this case, core first page set um, with the words in Chinese. And then we could hit launch page set for English and it brings us back. So you can kind of build your own toggle um, if we have a page set in that language already. Um, so, you know, Japanese, Swedish, French, um, 
you can you can build a button to to manually toggle um, and we can help with that if there's someone in mind. Um, Chandra, I'm curious what language would you want to see in in motor plan with that built in toggle? Um, I think it was the one we had, I think it was a vase on and he said Vietnamese was a big request in Oregon. And is that something that maybe we would find in um, the page central, like somebody has created already? Is that where you would go for that? You could, yeah, you could search in page set central, you can search by language and software. So you could look for like, you could check the box for TD snap and check the box for Vietnamese. Um, we don't have a pre-made page set for Vietnamese, but one workaround that I've built for specific folks um, was to use a Vietnamese voice and same with Russian, yep. Um, so if you set, we do have voices for most languages. And if you set the voice to Vietnamese um, or Russian, and then I've used Google Translate and like showed families how to manually translate the buttons, as long as the voice is set to that language, it will pronounce correctly. So it does take a bit of building things out, but if you have a tech savvy um, person who's willing to take that on, um, or you can record their own voice onto the button. So there are workarounds, um, but let us know if there's a language. I mean, I constantly ask for Vietnamese and Russian um, here in Portland, but if there's languages that you have a specific need for, um, we can submit that to the developers. We don't typically know like what's coming next until it's about to launch. So I don't have a, a crystal ball with that info, but um, we will kind of blast news out when something does launch. Wonderful. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? No? All right. All right. I hid my meeting toolbar. Does anybody know where I can get it back? Like to stop sharing? Yeah. <laughs> um, it should be across the top where it says, well, I can so stop I, it. Oh, you can stop it? Okay, great. Thank you. Perfect. I can see everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's tricky when you're sharing the software and it blocks you from. Yeah. <laughs> So I really love okay. the advocacy piece that you guys presented. That's been a running theme this year in particular. Um, so that was really great to see. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's a really important thing. And I love that it's built into the topics. There's um, like advocacy around communication and around kind of um like disability advocacy more broadly as well. So that's great. And I saw that you can gray out things. Um, in, I assume, can you just completely hide things? Yeah, I can share again and show you that. Um, let's see, let me know. We should see TV snap here. So in topics, yep. There are some things that are grayed out. Um, like I, it was because I moved this TV and movies, I made it smaller and that left kind of negative space here. Um, if I go into edit mode with this gear and pencil, I can choose any topics one by one to hide. And this is the same way that you could hide individual words in the word lists. It functions, um, editing functions the same way throughout the system. So let's say I've outgrown Mr. Potato Head I'm in edit mode. I can tap or click on Mr. Potato Head. You'll see it's kind of selected here with that border. And then there's this editing menu on the right hand side with all these symbols. Secret little tip that not many people know is that there's this arrow in the bottom right that pops out labels. I use this every single day. I still like to pop out the labels, um, especially for like copy and paste. The icons look very similar. But for hiding, I would hit this eyeball. And then you'll see when I hit done, Mr. Potato Head is hidden. 
I always like to recommend hiding versus deleting somebody. I was working with an adult yesterday with aphasia and um, he wanted to hide all the words about physical therapy. He was like, I don't go to physical therapy. I said, what if you do someday? You know, we, we don't want to have to rebuild like it's time for physical therapy. Help me with my exercises. When's my next appointment? That would take a lot of work. And I think the same thing applies here. Um, if there's like a curriculum topic, you know, maybe we're talking about volcanoes in science class. We don't want to delete the topic about volcanoes because what if it's revisited again in two years? You know, um, we can also multi-select and hide things as a group. So if I go into edit mode, pop out my handy labels, multi-select here with this checkbox with different squares checked. Let's say I no longer need Minecraft, My Feelings, Daniel Tiger, or Toy Play. I can hide all of those at once and hit done and they're all gone. Um, just one more thing to mention about topics too, is when you first set up someone in TD Snap Core first, there are some topics that are hidden. Um, about a year ago, the developers did some research on the most common topics and they like deleted the rest and you had to go to page set central and like restore all the ones that were not the most common. And people said, Hey, that's a big headache. Let's not do that. So now when you set up TD Snap Core first, if you go into edit mode and scroll down, there's all these topics that are just hidden beneath the filter. So you don't have to import them. Um, a lot of them are these kind of more young adult um, topics. So you'll see like sexuality is there, religion, um, centers, do uh, job coach, desk work, um, shopping. So a little bit more of these like young adult um, and independence building topics are hidden. So you just edit mode, scroll down, and then you can check the ones that you want to show. Um, you can even multi-select them and check, you know, I want to show all of these, show them, and you can move them up too. So if I wanted dentist, maybe that's becoming relevant. I have a trip to the dentist coming up. I can drag and drop. That's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. Yeah. And what about the keyboard? What kind of options do you have for that? I know you said you can customize it QWERTY or ABC or whatnot. Can you, is there a high contrast version or can you change the colors? Can you highlight the vowels? Yeah. Um, yes. So we would go into edit mode and I'll show you first just like how to change the keyboard. Um, so first let's say we want to make it QWERTY. You can go to page set and then you'll see the keyboard page is listed here and it's saying main grid matching, meaning it's going to automatically match the grid size. Um, I can click that and search for QWERTY. And then this main QWERTY will turn it into that style of keyboard. When you hit done, it looks like it failed. You just have to navigate away and then come back. So the page like refreshes and now it's in QWERTY. If we wanted now to make it more high contrast, we could go back into edit mode. Um, if we wanna change the background, you could do that for this page only. Um, so it would make just the background of the keyboard a different color. And I could do that in style and it says page background. It says, do you want to match the rest of them with this ash gray? And I can say no, and then choose all of these different colors. Maybe I want pure black. So it's more high contrast. Then I could go in and, and highlight the vowels if I wanted to. So I've selected a, anytime you want to change the style um, or the look of something that's under this style edit menu. And I could make it like honey colored, you know, yellow. Um, you could also do this with that multi-select function um, if you didn't want to go one by one. So you could tap all the vowels and change them all at once. I do like to make backspace red often, especially with adults with aphasia. I think that's a helpful tool. Sometimes I'll color code the space bar just so things stand out a little bit more for visual needs.
All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, I do see someone in here is asking about your opinion, um, how this program compares to something like Proloquo. Um, I think what TD Snap is known for is being really flexible, like all the changes that I just showed you. Um, and I think the ability to customize it and like really change anything about the look of it um, stands out to me. I also think those tools like the supports, you know, the first then, the visual schedule, the timers. I'm not super familiar with ProLoco, but last time I used it, I don't think those features were in there. I think those really do make TD Snap unique. Um, and then, of course, the options that within one app, within TD Snap, we have motor plan, we have core first. Um, within core first, you can change the grid size to whatever you want. And then we also have a text-based page set for, you know, as folks develop literacy, maybe they don't need symbol supports anymore, but they already know how to customize things. We can continue on in that same software. So I think it allows for a lot of flexibility as folks develop too. And do you guys have um, like an evaluator license that's available? A lot of them have a free license that we can use for trials. And how do yeah, they? We, um, <laughs> yeah, I can. Um, I can. Blair, do you want to put it in the chat real quick? The website. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you'll just go to my Toby Dynavox and you set up a professional license. We also have a PDF that shows the steps. Yeah. Um, so maybe we could send it to you, Chandra, and you could post it someplace. But I all SLP could, absolutely. Yeah, I'll put that in the resources for everybody. Sure. Yeah, the free um, professional version comes with motor plan, core first, aphasia, and the text page all available um, to use. So. Um, once you put the affiliation in um, with your either your ASHA license or just sharing that, you know, you're a therapist um, on our end, uh, someone on our tech team will approve it and then you can download it onto a tablet, a computer um, and use it for free. Excellent. All right, I will definitely make sure to get that put in the resources for everyone. So you'll be able to go into your IECHO platform and access that or into the archives. I'll put it there as well. And it looks like Blair has that in the chat. Awesome. Yeah, I typed out briefly like how to do it, but we also have a PDF with pictures that are like touch login here and then go here. And that's a little bit more step by step. So we'll send that along.